Hello everyone. Again, my name is Aldana Carney and it's an honor to be here with you today, this morning. Um, my husband Pat and I have been blessed with five children. Our youngest child, Neil, is a 19-year-old young man with severe autism. I have the same goals for Neil that I have for my other four kids. I want them all to be happy, healthy, and as independent as possible. Anyone in the audience who has a child with a disability will understand when I say that I hope to live at least one day longer than my son with autism so I can be there to advocate for his needs. As everyone knows, our plans don't always work out the way we want them to. I want my son in a living situation that is stable and will protect his rights if my husband and I are not there to speak up for him. Unfortunately, I'm not confident King Care will do that. <laughs> Governor Brownback's administration implemented the privatized managed care program called Can Care for all those who receive Medicaid services in the state of Kansas. Under Can Care, three for profit managed care organizations, better known as MCOs, have taken over the medical and long-term support services for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. These three MCOs are using a medical model to make decisions about eligibility and care. And basically what that means is they're making the decision where my child lives and works. Neil is a relatively healthy young man but he requires round-the-clock supervision for his safety. He could be very aggressive towards himself and others, and he's also been diagnosed with pica, and that means that he eats non-edible items. Neil needs assistance with very, with very intimate level of care, such as dressing, bathing, hygiene, and preparing meals. For example, he requires full assistance for brushing his teeth, shaving, and cleaning him up after he's used the bathroom. Just like any other child, we started potty training Neil when he was around the age of two. Twelve years later, we finally succeeded. <laughs> we threw a big, finally potty trained party to celebrate because we had had at least one of our kids, and sometimes more, in diapers for 22 years. <laughs> Neil was included into Can Care for medical services in January of 2013. Since then, we've had numerous denials of medications, and his medical card was terminated without any prior notification. We were later told that it was a computer glitch, and he was re-entered into the system. We have also had to resubmit the same paperwork multiple times because it gets lost in the MCO system. Finding a dentist for our son who needs to be sedated has been an uphill battle. Many providers are not contracting with MCOs because of low reimbursement rates and burdensome paperwork. And on a side note here, Neil is, um, has a history of being extremely aggressive when he has something wrong with his teeth. Um, he, in the past has even pulled out his own adult tooth, root and all, by biting the carpet in a rage when he had a cavity that we didn't know about. Proponents continue to champion can care as a reform to save public dollars without reducing services for those with intellectual and developmental disabilities, even though all three of the MCOs lost money in its first year. People's lives depend on these services, and state leaders need to be held accountable for the health and quality of life of our loved ones. A new website has launched for parents, guardians, and families of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities to share stories about their experience with can care, good or bad. The site, cancareddwatch.com, is the first central gathering point for CanCare stories and is intended as a place for people to share stories, read links to news articles, and access resource information. We as a society need to speak up for the most vulnerable citizens in our community who cannot speak for themselves. 
I so admire Mother Teresa for her life dedicated to compassion and care for the sick, elderly, and disabled. Mother Teresa once said, I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast a stone across the waters to create many ripples. I urge you to reach out to those who represent you in our great state of Kansas and let them know your concerns, whether it be to expand Medicaid to help the working poor have access to health care, or stand up for someone who is not receiving the services that they should through CanCare. Together, we can make change, and we can make a difference in the lives of many Kansans. Just think of the tidal wave that we can create if we all do our part and cast a stone into the water and get involved no matter how small. Remember, we are all just one accident away from a disability. So ask the tough questions and make those responsible for can care accountable for what they need to do to keep the most vulnerable population in Kansas healthy and safe. Thank you so much for listening, and I would like to conclude with another quote from Mother Teresa. A life not lived for others is not a life. Thank you.